Hi, and welcome to another episode of General Nerdery. Today, you can forget about that silly black and white mode that's built into your camera. I'm going to show you how to get much better results in Photoshop by converting color images into black and white. But I don't just mean desaturating, we're not just taking the color out of the photograph. We're going to use color channels. What's that mean? Well, let's find out. So we've got our color image here. And yes, we could just go up to image adjustments and desaturate and make this a black and white image. But that's boring and doesn't give us any control. So let's go ahead and undo that and I'm going to show you a couple more interesting ways to make a black and white image. The first method and one I've used frequently myself, especially when dealing with inanimate objects such as this, is simply go over to channels and here we can see the red, green, and blue color information of our total color image, but we can view them independently, meaning by clicking on the red here, we view just the red color information of our color image. You notice that the red berries become almost white because they are almost entirely red, while the blue background becomes almost black. Likewise, if I click on the blue channel, the blue background becomes very light and the red berries become almost black. And green is going to be something else entirely as well. When it comes to just about any picture other than a portrait, I will generally just go to channels click through the three different ones and pick the one that I think produces the most interesting photograph. For example, with this photo, I think the green looks quite nice. So I'll go ahead and make this my black and white image. It's done quite easily. Simply go up to image, mode, and select grayscale. Discard other channels. That means it's going to throw away the red and blue information and make a black and white image simply out of the green channel. And there we have it. That's our new black and white image. This method of making an image from only one color channel can also be used if you have a black and white image that has been damaged or defaced. I actually first discovered this trick when I was trying to remove coffee stains from a black and white photo. In this case, I printed out a black and white photo of my little brother and deliberately defaced it with a red and orange marker. Simply by selecting the red channel, the orange marker virtually disappears and the red one becomes light enough that it could be ignored. So that quickly and easily we virtually eliminated these two pieces of graffiti from this image with no cloning and no masking. It did get a little bit lighter in this case, but that can easily be adjusted in curves or with simple brightness and contrast. So remember, it can be helpful to scan your black and white images in color mode. Now the one color channel technique is great and all, but I rarely use it for converting color portraits. And the reason is it has a very dramatic effect on skin tones. The blue channel and the green channel are usually just flat out unusable. They tend to darken the skin and make any blemishes or imperfections stand out like a sore thumb. The red channel can be useful depending on the look you're going for. It tends to give the skin a white, almost porcelain look. It's not very natural looking, but it can be nice sometimes. Still, there is a better way to handle images like this, and that is to use the channel mixer. It does basically what we were doing before, but allows us to blend the three channels together at our discretion. Now, depending on your version of Photoshop, you may be able to do this in what's called an adjustment layer. However, I'm going to use the method that works in all versions of Photoshop so everybody can follow along. Go up to Image, Adjustments, and now Channel Mixer. Click the monochrome button. Now, I'll first note that Photoshop does have built-in presets which simulate various color filters being put on the lens of the camera. Using the blue, green, or red filters will do basically the same thing as if you were selecting those channels. However, the yellow filter and the orange filter can produce some quite nice results for portraits. Particularly the orange filter, as it reduces skin blemishes and so forth, softens the complexion without producing that porcelain skin look. We, on the other hand, are going to be working manually. By adjusting the red, green, and blue sliders, you can turn up or down that color channel's presence in the image. Keep in mind that if you turn one color channel up, you do need to turn down another or others in order to keep from overexposing the photograph. You may want to consider turning on the histogram function in Photoshop to help you maintain a proper exposure. If you don't know how to read a histogram, well, in an overexposed image, the histogram will run right off the right side. In an underexposed image, it will get squashed to the left. You want a nice even slope taking up as much of the histogram as possible without running off either side. And as long as you can maintain something similar to this, you will have a nicely exposed image. Once you have the channel mixer set to your liking, select OK. And now save your image. 
and that's two techniques for getting improved black and white images from color ones using Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next week on General Nerdery.